Welcome back, Star Seeds. It's good to see you guys. Let's just stop for a moment and take a deep breath. So right off the bat, that clears your mind and puts it into a, a theta brainwave pattern a higher version of consciousness within yourself. You do that every day, right before your meditation, before you start something stressful, you're going to be in a lot better place because right off the bat, it's gonna make you feel more connected. So, what I wanted to go over today <clears throat> was something that a lot of people have been striking a lot of interest in. And I wanted to talk about the hidden cities under Death Valley and possibly other hidden realms within the southwestern United States. Originally, how I came across this topic was just like you, looking up ancient history. And what I had found was that quite possibly many millennia ago before Native Americans have even possibly came to North America or even during the same time frame that Nephilim or larger beings, taller beings, possibly inhabited much of North America. We're starting to uncover these large unusual skeletons all over the world and they're starting to show up in most recently in South America. So to give you a little backdrop on the story, there was a man of, this was in 1947, there was a publication in the San Diego local newspaper and it said that a man discovers an ancient network of caves and tunnels that lead to an underground city. This this man it goes by, was by the name of Howard E. Hill, and he had stumbled across through his own research. He came across a cave, and he had originally moved out of the Western United States for, for a variety of health reasons. And so he started exploring around in Death Valley, and he fell into a cave. He said he, it, it, what he described was that he fell into possibly a collapsed cave tunnel that led him into an underground chamber that led into some kind of catacomb with giant skeletons that were ex you know exceeding 12 feet and there was a tomb in there with several different tunnels that went off in a, a myriad of directions and so he when he left there he tried to inform the archaeological community at the time in Los Angeles and nobody took him seriously everybody just thought he was a joke and he assembled a team that he created his own company, I forget the name of the company, to go and lead an expedition down into Death Valley. And he basically didn't find it. When he went there again, he couldn't find the tunnel access. He couldn't find the cave, he couldn't find where he went. He tried to remember exactly where he went, but he couldn't find it. So. There's a lot of mysticism that surrounds the Death Valley and a lot of ancient areas in the, in the desert southwest. His story is not the only one in that area. Paiute Native Americans that inhabited the region prior to uh, white settlers had came, there was an important chief and when his wife died he wanted to go back and be with her, or get her from, from the dead, or he wanted to be with her. So there was a huge amount of folklore 
that surrounds this one. But essentially, he had ventured back through a complex maze of tunnels, according to Paiute legend, that led him into an underworld of with different beings and different, essentially what it sounds like a different dimension. So it's possible he might have crossed an interdimensional portal, I don't really know on that, but basically he went deep into this underground city, or what was thought to be an underground city, under Death Valley through a complex maze of tunnels, and he had made his way all the way to the center of this region that supposedly there was all these souls of Paiute that had passed away and he went into that centralized chamber and they had told him that if he takes if he wishes to see his wife he'll have to wait patiently so he waited patiently to see his wife in this essentially underworld and he waited for days according to the legend and he was eventually able to find his wife. His wife came to him in running in his arms and then the Paiute legend says that he had to cross back where he came from and not look back at the city or the place at which she, she had been found in this underworld that he would have her in the physical realm but they said you can't look back so he went through all that effort and he stole a quick look back according to legend and he found himself suddenly alone and so when he made his back way back to his his other tribal leaders he had told him this story and there was another story that I had heard about there was a prospector named he went by the name of White and he this was in the 1920s and he found somewhere in the Panamint Mountains like pretty close to Death Valley an entrance to a cave system where there was uh, tombs filled with you know riches and gold bars and various other artifacts that didn't their archaeological understanding of uh, North America and so he went in there and I think he brought his wife he brought his wife and they were able to see some of these items in there and he I, I can't even remember if what he brought back but he assembled a team to go there with a few friends and when they tried to go back they couldn't they couldn't find it when, and he the only thing he did was he found a, a huge there was a cave that had like a huge stone that was in the way that almost like it seemed like a movable stone that was blocking the entrance like either intentionally or through, you know for whatever reason this had blocked this entrance and so he basically spent the rest of his life looking for the the city this underworld you know place of riches and he was found with his friend, like right before he went to go embark on his last journey, he was last seen climbing the east side of the Panamint Mountains, and then he was never seen or heard from again. Which is kind of weird because the rock, the Howard E. Hill story is remarkably similar. He was seen, you know, going to, through trying to find these caves, and essentially, they found his car parked in the desert with a blown radiator with a briefcase still in there and nowhere to be found. So nobody knows what happened to him or where he went. They never found him. And I would imagine there's probably other things we've heard that have happened that we just don't know about. Because it's all linked to a very specific area. And if you think about it, if you study the, the geography of the western United States, especially out by Death Valley, Nevada, and lots of Arizona and Eastern California, it's, it's a basin and range, meaning the continent is essentially spreading apart 
and there's a rift which creates the Great Basin that you see today in Nevada and you know most of the southwest and this theory of tunnels is not that far-fetched if you have I'm not sure if any of you have heard of these subterranean tunnels but they crisscross the pattern of the planet like the whole planet they crisscross the planet and there are some of them are tens of thousands of years old and they're linked with natural caves and there's a lot of folklore surrounding these tunnels some of them have been studied in Europe some of them have been blocked one of the more recent tunnel system is there was a in 2003 the CIA assembled a team of archaeologi archaeologists that had discovered through some type of you know ground penetrating radar some kind of satellite imagery that there was a huge chasm in the Busigi Mountains in Romania and they sent out a team from, from, CIA, from the CIA in the United States to go explore this. So I don't, I don't know exactly how they penetrated the rock or you know, if they dug a tunnel or what they did. They had some sort of weird undisclosed technology supposedly that they had figured out how to get to the center of this mountain in Romania. Basically there's a, there's a sphinx, like a heavily glaciated sphinx on top of this mountain in Romania, in the Busigi Mountains, and it looks remarkably similar to the one in Egypt, but this one is maybe just as old, if not older, or even the same age, and it's heavily glaciated from the last ice age, so it's, if you look at this, just look up the Sphinx in the Busa G Mountains. I'll put a link down in the description. And below that is this huge holographic library. This was, if you read in Edward Casey's, who is a really famous American psychic, he lived at the turn of the 20th century. He said that a hall of records was going to be found and it was going to be one of the, the single largest discovery in the 21st century. Which, if we're able to go to the hall of records at some point, this is, you know, ancient human history, you know, the, the, that holds on to ancient scientific knowledge that we couldn't even fathom. The library is essentially protected by a, a, a force field and this force field allows nobody to penetrate it without being the right vibratory match I'll put a link to one of the stories about it that was leaked and there's supposedly another location in Iraq that was under US control at the time so when this team that was assembled to go to the Busigi Mountains in Romania penetrated this chamber, there, it's protected by an energy force field that you have to be the right vibratory match. And you know, this was, there were scientists, I can't remember who led the expedition. The scientists w went with military personnel, you know, as security into this really complex hall, you could say. Before they got to the center room though, there was an energy force field that they had to, to get past. And it was essentially impermeable by technology we don't even understand. If you throw stones at it, the stones turn to dust according to the accounts. And the th there was a few uh, military personnel that attempted to go through it and they all immediately died of heart, uh, cardiac arrest, according to the account. So, this is essentially telling me that they weren't the vibration match. But the scientists whose 
intentions were possibly more pure and looking to possibly better humanity was allowed into this chamber and then from there he was able to access the center of this ancient holographic library that would show it's if you look at okay think about the game Halo which is a really famous sci-fi sci a game that came out really close to this time of this discovery this game depicted this holographic library when it was activated you would supposedly activate the halo now <laughs> this is where it gets weird that game came out a couple of years before this was even discovered or supposedly even known about who knows maybe it had been around before what well, maybe we had known about it before but this was the first widespread discovery and the Romanian government was essentially told to keep quiet about it so once the researchers went into this you know complex that had several different tunnels that led all over you know different directions and supposedly some of these tunnels led to as far away as Tibet and other spiritual sites on the planet and even places like Antarctica which is why there's so much mystery surrounding Antarctica like what the hell is going on in Antarctica well, we don't know there's weird things going on people are saying they have uh, found pyramids that were buried under the snow I mean I don't know how any how true any of that stuff is but it definitely gets you thinking that there's a lot of history that we're not being told so anyways back to the BCG mountains when they activated when the scientists went into this into this chamber, the main holographic chamber that activated this essential central library of, of holographic records that was only permeable. Uh, people could only go in there with the right intention. That's what this technology was some kind of security measure that you cannot enter it without the right intention. And it was it was designed that way on purpose. I mean, when you look about how much evil and wickedness is on this planet. You know, when you look at the this, this socio-economic policies and how the government is all over the planet are, are often corrupt and they're run by, you could say, these heartless bastards. Um, and if you've studied into the, um, the occult, there, there's so much information that could be, you know, uncovered why the world's ruling structures are totally corrupt. But... I'm trying to focus on on why this, how this relates to the location in, in Death Valley, because these underground tunnels, if they span the planet, and they have these really bizarre riches that kind of mimic what they had seen in ancient in Egypt, and the mummification process, and these various different riches, it would not be in the, if in the interest of the United States to disclose that kind of information because it would totally throw off the narrative of where where the hell did we come from and what's been going on for, for millennia so if there are these subterranean tunnels that exist all over the planet it's there are tunnels that have been found under the pyramids they've been found in the pyramids in southern Mexico and a lot of other sacred sites around the world. Now, in the southwest as well, in the Grand Canyon, I believe it was in 1909, um, there was a man who found, or supposedly found through a river expedition, this man from Wyoming, I can't remember his name for the life of me, he found a uh, there was this cave in the Grand Canyon that he basically stumbled across and found mummified beings, like tall mummified beings and riches that, that mimicked Egyptian history. These things weren't in relation to North American or Native American history. So, the, we're not really sure on this. This is where I'm, I get kind of like, this is a gray area. If it had been published in a couple of newspapers, there was one in Phoenix and one in Yuma, that published this story in 1909. I'll put it up here on the screen. 
So this would be an earth-shattering discovery on behalf of the Smithsonian. And the fact that at the time, in 1909, this was, you know, pre-Federal Reserve days, but that doesn't mean that the control of information hadn't already started. I mean, I, there was, you could go really super deep into why the information is suppressed in the United States and in the world since its founding. <laughs> Um, that gets into a whole another realm of the occult and Freemasonry, but in a nutshell, the Founding Fathers were all Freemasons, so the 33 degree Freemasons, and if you uh, understand what that is, is, you know, ultra high secrecy secret societies that only the masons of the 33 degree typically of specific bloodlines are allowed to know or access the vast knowledge of the history of the earth so if something crazy leaked like you know these subterranean tunnels in this underworld then it would possibly, you know, destroy any narrative or credibility in the future for these types of things. So, who knows, really? You know, the Smithsonian says there's no record of this, but there's these newspaper accounts, and whether we believe them to be satire or true is up to you to decide. I'm only here presenting the information so you can figure this out yourself because we'll never really know on that but I can point to the fact that if you study the Native American legends and folklore you will find a lot of really bizarre things that either indicate the existence of extraterrestrials or indicate the existence of forces that are not understood by modern science, and one particular, if we go back to the Grand Canyon, there's an area known by Hopi legend as the Sipaipu, and this is an area where the Little Colorado River meets the larger Colorado River in the east side of the Grand Canyon. Uh, pretty close where this other man had made this a discovery of the ancient catacombs and possible Egyptian style artifacts and large skeletons and mummified bodies and all that whatnot. It's still a mystery completely what happened there. But the Sipaipu is a, is a known area and the Hopi legend says the Sipaipu is a portal to the fourth dimension, to the underworld. And if that's true, and it goes beyond the physical 3D, you kind of have to expand your uh, perception a little on this one, because this is where reality gets kind of weird. This is uh, thought of as the underworld, or another dimension, or the dream world, where you can directly interact, almost in a lucid dream state. Now, if these tunnels are three-dimensional, we should theoretically be able to define them. But it seems almost as if when you look at these accounts, especially the ones in Death Valley, they try to go back to the location, they either can't find it, it's blocked, or they go missing. So that's pretty weird in itself. And that should kind of leave a big clue as to what we're dealing with. And we'll probably never know until we break out of this three-dimensional matrix or this paradigm of simple reality, I guess you could call it. Let's just call 3D, what you experience on day-to-day, -day, simple reality. Now, if there was indeed a portal 
or a vortex of some sort, because Arizona is very well known for its bizarre vortexes. And just look at places like Sedona, there's dozens of vortexes that dot all over the area. There's a lot of ley lines. And if you understand a lot of these sacred sites, follow these magnetic ley lines, which I can attach some more information at this description. Ley lines are magnetic lines in which the planet uses almost as a artery of maybe not information, but the 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 universe that's being projected onto the Earth is ran around these ley lines. These magnetic lines are just highways of energy leading north and south and all over the planet to various different sites based on the geography of the planet. They they seem to you know take the path of least resistance, but they also have certain junctions and vortexes that are dotted all over the world. And a lot of the you know there's a lot of new age stuff, which I think new age stuff is a lot of it is misleading in that way. That talks about this type of you know phenomenon, but essentially these super energy highways or these ley lines, a lot of these sacred sites follow these ley lines and to see Papu is no exception it follows a correspondence of a couple of different ley lines that pass very close to the area if you if you cross over if you are have been meditating for a while and you are going in an inward journey and you are kind of strengthening your psychic perception um, you might find that if you cross one of these ley lines you feel an energy shift or you go to a certain area like you'll find the community is unusually vibrant and has weird aspects about it like there's a ley line that crosses in a community I used to live in called Ocean Beach in San Diego again a really weird energy is found there in San Francisco and all these like really unique world heritage sites have these ley lines. There's a ley line that passes from England or the UK all the way down to Mexico and it influences where the pyramid sites were. They were aligned with these very strong ley lines. So it's kind of an energy hub or highway and if other dimensional beings could possibly, you know, cross in and out of these energy highways and step off the highway. And it might be a fuel to the paranormal activity that we hear about. I'm sure that if paranormal hotspots, if you research it, I would guarantee if there's a ley line there, it probably crosses into that area. In fact, the one that crosses through the UK on the English side goes through, you know, from London to South Western England, and a lot of paranormal activity has been recorded along this really famous ley line. So, these ley lines can influence these sites or these vortexes, and it's possible that someone could have maybe fell into one of these bizarre anomalies in the planet's surface, we don't know. I don't know, there's, there isn't really a huge ton of, you know, documented information on this. It's, it's mostly just kind of various accounts and piecing it together. But again, I'm, I'm just saying this for you to piece this together yourself. But I strongly believe that outside of the three-dimensional simple world, there are these multiple dimensions, you know, a multitude. We don't even know. I mean, science... Even, even the scientific community is coming out and saying, hey, there are possibly more dimensions that we even, than we even know. We don't even know. We just know there is definitely more dimensions. You know, all these weird phenomena cannot be explained in the 3D alone. And it's, if you've meditated and gone into sort of an inward journey, you'll, you will see that yourself. Um, a lot of the spiritual leaders of this time have, you know, emphasized that it's not all what it seems. So, it's not impossible to believe that with the holographic library and the subterranean tunnels that go across the planet and the 
submarine caves that could exist in the western United States and possibly in other countries too that these things do exist and that there are these portals all over the planet um, a lot of in like Tibet there's I think it's Mount Kalish is a very famous sacred site a lot of, you might find a lot of these sacred sites have uh, an energy junction just like how where the pyramids are built, they're built in very specific sites. These sacred sites were aligned with the, the geometry of the planet, the alignment of the cosmos. They were, these ancients really knew their stuff. I mean, we're just so juvenile. Like, there's a vast history that humans have forgotten for whatever reason, whether that be through, you know, war, disaster, there's so many theories as to why we're sitting here totally dumbfounded, why we have no idea what to do. Like, if you look back um, in the coral, I think it's Coral Beach in Florida, there was a man who built this castle using supposedly ancient technology that was used to build uh, the pyramids. And it could be... Uh, a magnetic or a vibratory control mechanism, some kind of technology that we're extremely primitive on. The, the Tibetan monks had also harnessed this technology. There was, I can't remember the name of the man, but there was somebody that had went and ventured to, somebody relatively famous, he had went to Tibet to study these monks, and he watched them use a variety of instruments in this large regret gathering, and they, they chanted a certain tone to move the stone, and the vibration caused the stone to levitate, and science is already uncovering this, they're already saying, hey, you know, we can levitate stones and with sound, although it's all small and primitive, I mean, think about a, a magnetic lev train, magnetic levitation train is, is, is uh, using magnets in a controlled manner. Now, if you were able to interject a magnetic understanding to non-ferrous objects, like items that are not steel or naturally magnetic, and you could somehow manipulate its energy field, you could theoretically move these things, which might also explain these trap doors that had closed these caves off, this man had just, these people had discovered it, like these caves in Death Valley, you know, they, they, they were open, they fell in it, and it was probably accidental, it wasn't supposed to happen, and then it sealed off, and they were never, never able to find it, and these people disappeared, so it's, it's definitely paranormal, and it leaves a lot of open thought. So, whatever ancient history you believed or were taught in school is his story. Remember, history is his story. And the victors always write the narrative. So in the United States, it's, you know, glorified, central, central centralized around, you know, a, do, a predominant white American male, you know, viewed history. It doesn't fully account what happened. And we're discovering this, you know, even on social media, this is a worldwide phenomenon. Everyone is starting to question, hey, is the history in our books even true, or is this just made up bullshit? So, this opens a whole Pandora's box, and I feel, hopefully, you know, in the coming years, more thought and study opens these ancient vaults, or maybe possibly you might there might be some leaks from the government saying, hey, we did know about this. I mean, for gosh sakes, you can go on uh, CIA's website and they publish the Illum Illuminati 13 bloodlines, you know, and it's, it's just an intro, but they're, they're coming out with it, this information that was always deemed a conspiracy, and now it's coming out as truth because too many people know, and they figure, well, we know this stuff. What are you going to do about it? And this is the power structure of the planet. And I feel that this is also why humanity has suffered for so long. We're being purposely hidden. That knowledge is locked away in the occult, which the study of the occult is what is hidden. And so a lot of, you know, vital information for bettering humanity and to advance and grow and be, blossom into this incredible civilization um, that is much beyond what this controlled matrix is, 
would require gaining access, access to these sites or going to the Hall of Records in either, there was one in Iraq and there was another one in, the, in Romania. When we, you know, when we gained that ability to do that, that's when humanity will progress more probably in one year than we progressed in the last 5,000 years. Because the first thing that has to happen is the control paradigm on this planet has to break. And we are seeing that. We are seeing the destruction of world governments and power structures and religion are all simultaneously crumbling. And there's a whole, I have a whole other video on that that I was going to publish. So we're, we're seeing all these things happen. These are not random events. This is just time for, you know, humanity is waking up all around the world. This is time, this is our time to shine. You know, it's no longer a select few in the top of the pyramid structure rule the many. It is the, the many collective rule for everyone. It's, it's no longer your shattering pyramid, you know, control schemes. So, that all I feel like a lot of these archaeological discoveries are going to become more common, or that we're going to find more information, you know, linking these important sites together. You're going to find things that will link Machu Picchu in South America with the pyramids in the Mayan Empire in Mexico and linking Easter Island and all these other various sites around the world that are are very peculiar to the uninformed human, which we all are, we're all learning. Once we access, I believe if we access the Hall of Records that Edward Casey was talking about and it becomes public, all these questions and then many more we're going to be answered. So I think it's a great time to be alive and, and watch this unfold. I, stuff happening in the next you know, 10 to 20 years or less, you know, I think things are moving right along, humanity's waking up, they're not, you know, going to sit around and take this shit forever, and, you know, the internet has essentially given humanity the freedom to express themselves, just like how I am, and that vast sea of knowledge, you know, we're in the age of information, it's becoming, you know, so widespread that anyone can look up anything in the palm of their hand tech companies try to silence or control or filter the information, but it, it's bursting at the seams. It's, it's just, it's uncontrollable. I mean, there's always ways around blocks and controls and, you know, all that nonsense. But anyway, I could go on for an eternity, and I have several more videos that I will dive into various different topics. Um, I attached some links in the description below, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. And thanks for joining me. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day, and I strongly encourage you to check out my video, Why I Started Meditating. I know it's a little bit long and rambly, but it uh, explains some of the things that I did when I meditated and what I had found. And I strongly suggest in this time of awake, great awakening in humanity that uh, you give meditation a try. And thanks for joining me today, and have a blessed rest of your day. Peace.